Hey y'all, uh, I wanted to record a little tutorial on how to identify plants. One of the biggest questions I get is about how to know what a plant is, whether it or not it's native or invasive. So I wanna teach you all to do that for yourselves. Um, if you hear any strange noises in the background, that's my dog. She is, she just turned one, so she has a puppy energy and a 50 pound body. So that's the thing. I thought she was going to take a nap, but she hasn't. So we're just doing it anyway. Um, okay, so you don't need to memorize what every plant looks like. Um, I think maybe that's what some people think they have to do, and that sounds overwhelming, and that would be overwhelming. Um, the internet is a wonderful tool. And if you're watching this, that means that you have access to the internet. So you should use it. Um, a lot of times people will send me photos of plants and ask me what it is, which is fine. You can do that. Um, feel free to ask me, but you know, it's a good skill to have to be able to do it yourself. Um, so we have databases on the internet and we're going to go more into depth on each of these. I'll give you a little tutorial. Uh, and then there are several apps that you can download on your phone that will just take, um, you can take a photo of the plant that you're trying to ID and it will tell you what it is compared to their database. Their social media, like I said, you can always DM me if you need to. You, there are a lot of um, plant identification Facebook groups. If you're on Facebook, if you're on Instagram, you can post in your stories and say, hey, does anybody know what this is? And then um, there are a lot of great books. Um, I have, it's going to be mad that my background's blurred out. Oh, sorry. Let me unblur my background. Can I do that from here? Oops. Well, whatever. Okay, this is Newcomb's Wildflower Guide. Um, it has illustrations. Maybe if I put it over my face. No, not gonna happen. Um, but yeah, it has illustrations. A lot of different plants. Uh, it has like a glossary of botanical terms. Um, and then it has it kind of like sorted by the leaf structure. So if you're somebody who likes to kind of have a hands-on approach more than just using your phone or the internet, that uh, is an option. And there are tons of plant identification books out there. So before we get into the actual like how to identify, I wanted to define some of these terms because along with identifying the species, I want you to be able to identify, is it native, non-native, invasive, and or noxious? So to do that, you need to first of all know what those terms mean. Uh, so the definition of a native plant is a plant that has developed over hundreds or thousands of years in a particular region or ecosystem. So something that was not introduced by humans, something that evolved in a specific place and is supposed to be there as part of the ecosystem. Non-native plant is a plant that was introduced by humans to a new place where it was not previously found. And it's important to note that not all non-native plants are invasive. Um, a lot of them are quite the opposite where they require a lot of maintenance, a lot of extra water, uh, people fertilize them and things because they don't grow well uh, where you're trying to grow them. And that's because they evolved in a different climate. Uh, an example would be turf grass where it needs like excessive irrigation because it's very thirsty. Um, oh yeah. Invasive plants are um, plants that are both non-native and able to establish on many sites, grow quickly and spread to the point of disrupting plant communities or ecosystems. 
So basically this is a plant that is fine with your climate that's not native and is also, it grows vigorously. And the fact that it's not native means it's away from its natural enemies or things that eat it like um, insects or other animals or whatever. So it's able to kind of like go unchecked and spread very quickly and it will outcompete native plants and cause ecological harm, create monocultures, which is terrible for the soil, etc. And then a noxious weed is any plant that can cause damage to crops, livestock, irrigation, navigation, uh, the natural resources, public health, or the environment. Um, this is kind of like a, a legal definition mostly. And it's plants that, like it says, cause direct damage. They could be um, poisonous to either humans and or livestock and or wildlife. Uh, they could be like cause uh, like a rash and irritation, anything that could cause like physical harm to living things. Or it could be something that just like is invasive. Um, to the point where it will take out crops or take over areas like kudzu is uh, a noxious weed because it grows so quickly that it can just take over a huge area very fast and um, cause a lot of damage. Uh, it's also good to know that if something is listed as a noxious weed, at least in the US, that means that the government is allowed to come in and like seize the area, quarantine the area, destroy the plants, stuff like that. So you don't want noxious weeds growing because uh, for a lot of reasons. Okay. So first, what I wanted to show you is the app that I use, which is called Picture This. Um, I have an iPhone. I think it's also on Android, but I'm not 100% sure. Apologies for my dog loudly drinking water behind me. Um, so I just screen recorded a, a video of it. So you take your photo. You can either take it in real time or load it from your photo screen. So I'm going to pick uh, this Calico Aster. Um, if you're taking the picture in real time, you can upload three different photos. So then it scans it, it compares it to its database. Then it says, okay, this is Calico Aster. It shows the other photos of it. It gives you a description and just some like information about the plant. Um, and then if you go to the bottom, so here it says like, you know, uh, condition requirements and all that. But if you go to the bottom, it'll show you a range map. So the green area is where it's native blue means it's cultivated so it exists there but it's not native so this is a native range the green of calico aster um, and then you can add that plant to your collection so like you can add it to your full this is like my garden and then I have this folder it lets you make other folders so I have like pictures people have sent me and then I have like things that I've found myself or things that are growing in my garden. So I think that is a really good tool. It's really easy. You can just get it on your phone. Uh, it's not 100% accurate. Like most of these things aren't going to be 100% accurate, especially if the plant is very young. Um, but it's still a really helpful tool. Another really helpful tool is iNaturalist. Um, I believe there's also an app that you can get on your phone for this, but you can also do it on desktop, iNaturalist.org. And it is a um, big internet database where anybody can upload photos of plants or wildlife and use it. Um, to identify and then also like scientists use it. Sorry. 
sorry. Um, so scientists use it to kind of like tell the populations of plants to give them an idea of observations. Um, and let's see my observations. So when you upload something, um, hold on one second, let me do a, a little, like what happens when you actually upload? Let me find a picture to use. Oh. Okay, never mind. Well, what happens is you upload your photo. And then it will give you a suggestion of what it thinks that it is compared to its like database of what it looks like, plus also um, observations near you. So it also wants like your location, uh, the date and time that it was observed, like you can see here. And it'll pull that metadata from the photo, um, or you can also enter it yourself. Like here's a house sparrow, because you can also do animals. Uh, and I am not as good at identifying things like birds as I am with plants because that's not my specialty. But um, so I, that's what I use it for. Sometimes I also use it for plants, sometimes to identify things. And sometimes if I know what it is just to add to the database for people to use to know what's growing, especially with um, invasives. So once you upload it, if you see this pink exclamation point, that means it's an introduced species, like it says, introduced to Kent County, Kentucky, arrived in the region via anthropogenic means, which means by people, how sparrows are invasive um, in my area. So like you can see here, I wasn't sure what type of sparrow it was. So it let me just put, it's a sparrow. And then you see other people said it's a house sparrow. And then you can also compare. So it'll show you photos. I looked through the photos and I said, yes, I do agree that this is a house sparrow. And then this is my identification. And if you get multiple of the same identifications, it gets you this cool little thing that says that it's research grade, which if you're a nerd like me, I think that's fun. Um, you can also um, look at other people's, um, what they've uploaded. So if you're just like curious about things that are in your area, so like I can put my city in here, Covington, Kentucky, go. And then I can see all the things that people have uploaded in my area. And that can kind of help you get an idea of what is growing uh, around you. And yeah, I think that's a really helpful tool. Um, sometimes, so like you can see Like this, I didn't get anybody to identify it along with me. So I'm not 100% sure. And it's something that I'm not totally sure if this is the right ID or not. So that might be when you, you know, want to bring it onto a social media, get into like a plant ID group or somebody that you know uh, is good at IDing things. It shows you a map um, and the red dots are where it's been seen. So yeah, cool stuff. So once you have identified the species, if you're still not sure where it is native to, I think the easiest way to do it is to 
type in the scientific name of the plant and then just write native range into Google or your favorite uh, search engine. So this is a genus. This is okay. So this should tell me, here we go. Here's the distribution map of that plant, the Northern Bugleweed. So the green is where it's native to. So I'm in Kentucky. I'm like right here-ish. Um, so it is native to my area. There's also Bonap. It's a really good resource. All of these, so I'm gonna pull up a couple of websites and all of them are government websites, which are like, for whatever reason, US government websites are garbage and they look like they're made in the nineties and like, they're gonna give you a virus, but they really are, that's, you know, kind of how you know it's a government website. So you can look up by genus is usually how I do it. These are county maps. I just want a full North American map. So alphabetical by genus. So I was looking up the Northern Bugleweed. You have to go by the scientific name. I'm not going to try to pronounce it because scientific names are hard to pronounce. But I've got it here. Like Lycopus. Um, I also hate the way that they organize their, it alphabetically here because it goes like left to right, I think. Yeah, instead of, and I don't know, it's confusing, but you can find it. You can also control F. Oh, where's my, let's see, like Copus. That brings up the genus. And then you wanna look for the actual species. So this, this is the species that I was looking up, and this is, the green is the native range. So I know that this plant is native to my area. So if you look up the native range, let me see something on my iNaturalist that's not native. Um, burdocks are non-native. So again, when you're looking on iNaturalist, it'll show up in like this hot pink color introduced to the United States. So, what I like to do, what's happening, okay. Um, is look up the scientific name and then just type in invasive and see what comes up. So the first thing is the invasive plant atlas, which I was going to bring you to anyway. This is another government website, like, I don't know who designed this logo, this font, why it looks like this, but you can see down here all the different, it's like multiple universities and government organizations all work together to make this database and they couldn't make it look, you know, decent. <laughs> um, but so here it says native range Eurasia. So Europe and Asia, um, I am in North America, so it's not native. Um, this map is like the distribution of where it's been reported. Obviously it's not complete because again, I'm like right here, let's see, somewhere around here, give or take. And it's not green, even though I see this plant all the time. Um, but you can see where it's been reported as invasive. It looks like it is on the official South Dakota invasive list but really if it's like i know that burdock is invasive in my area it has like taken over huge areas um 
around me. And it caused a lot of problems. So I just kind of take it as if it's foreign and it is listed as invasive somewhere nearby or somewhere, you know, in the general region of your area, you know, even if it's a couple of states over somewhere, if it's somewhere with a similar climate, definitely. Let's see, this says... I guess that's Alaska. Um, yeah. So like Mid-Atlantic Exotic Plant Management Invasive List. So really if you if you type it in here and you see that it's invasive. Oops, I didn't mean to open a new window. another government website that looks like trash um and it'll a lot of these will give you a description if you need help identifying it uh for noxious weeds well so okay let's go back a little bit so if you those two websites that i just pulled up were invasive.org and invasiveplantatlas.org so both of them you could also just like go to and search that plant name and see if it comes up. Which the burdock does because it is invasive. Um, and you can also just like browse invasive species. So if you go to species, the top here in plants, it'll just like show you a big list of invasive plants in the US. And then you can click on them, see what they look like, see some information about them and see who like officially, like this looks like, I don't know what state that is. Don't ask me about geography, but it probably says somewhere. Maryland. It is an, on Maryland's official list of invasives. Um, you can also just search your state and they each like state government will have its own invasive plant list. So like if I look up Kentucky invasive species. And then that'll take to the Kentucky government website, nuisance species. Uh, I want to look at terrestrial species, which means it's on land and not water. This is more than I want. Um, Kentucky invasive, invasive plants. Game based species. Okay, this is not as easy as, as it should be. I found this list the other day here. It was through the Invasive Plant Act Atlas. This is Kentucky's official invasive plant list. So you can scroll and see all the different ones and then click on them and see pictures. And it'll tell you that, like why it's an ecological threat. So like this plant forms dense mats at the surface of the water. So it's harmful to wetlands. Um, and then you can also find the noxious weeds, Kentucky noxious weed list. And that's going to be a lot shorter than the invasive weeds. And this is their invasive.org. So the invasive.org and invasive plant atlas, plant atlas are good resources. So like this list is way shorter 
Um, you also can't always go off the, so like Canada thistle is not from Canada. Um, just like Kentucky bluegrass is not uh, from Kentucky. So you can't always go off of the common names. I would say most of the time you can, maybe like 80% of the time, that's just a random number. But um, if it has like the name of a state or it says like American or Canadian in the common name, a lot of the time that means it's native, but not all of the time. So you do still want to check. Um, and so there's also the classification of exotic. Exotic means it comes from a different continent, whereas non-native means that it just comes from a different area, essentially. So like if a plant from Mexico is introduced to Canada, it would be non-native, but not exotic because it's from the same continent. So exotic just means a different continent, which is usually the case for invasives. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think that is about all that I wanted to explain. So mostly it's just taking pictures, uploading them, and then doing some Googling. You don't always want to trust Google. You want to make sure that you get to like an official website. Like you don't want to go to just like some random garden blog. You want to find a trusted website that has the credentials that it is partnered with or run by um, universities are always good, things like the National Park Service, the um, National Wildlife Federation, the Fish and Wildlife Services, um, things like that. Uh, the Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center is a really good, another good database for finding native plants. Um, they have lots of natives and then like lots of photos um so let me just search something like vague so like if i search aster it'll, it should show up with like all the native asters maybe maybe it won't It was just taking its time. Native plant database. So I really love the wild. It's wildflower.org is the website, but it's the Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center through, I think it's the University of Texas. So you can search and then like here are all a bunch of native asters. Um, and then if you click on one, I like this because it also gives you like the like care needs, like growing conditions, like soil and moisture, wet, soil description, wet to dry sands. Some species will have more information than others. So like, let me find a really common one, New England Aster. So it also has image galleries, so you can go there and look at pictures of it. So show you the size, three to six feet, the bloom time. Um, this just like lists the states and the provinces of Canada. And then it'll go say like part shade, uh, soil pH, the benefits, like bees and butterflies frequent this flower, nectar source for monarchs. Larval host for pearl crescent checker spot, pearl crescent and checker spot butterflies. And then like an image of a, one of the butterflies that the host plant for. So I love this. So you can always, um, it's a little more user friendly than Bone Up. I like Bone Up because it gives you the full like 
actual map to look at to say like here is the native range and I think that's cool um but the Lady Bird Johnson Center will give you like a lot more information and it's also tells you the the range it just isn't a map it's listed out in the states and provinces okay so hopefully that's helpful um there are other apps besides picture this that can identify plants for you um picture this is just what i use and i know that it's um pretty reliable and then it also has the the range maps which is useful i think you have to I think there's a free version and a paid version. I pay for it, but it is affordable. It's like maybe $20 a year. So that's not $20 a month, $20 a year. Um, and I'm, I don't remember the difference between the free version and the paid version, but I think it's worth it. Um, but if you find a different app, and I'm not affiliated with them or anything, I don't, I don't get any money if you sign up. I just like the app. Um, but definitely, you know, browse through other apps, just like searching plant identification apps. And if you find one that works for you, that is good. And iNaturalist is always, always there for you if your app can't figure it out uh, and if you need some, some backup. And like I said, I am very happy to help you identify plants. If you need the help, you can always DM me and send me a picture of a plant and I will help you. But I think being able to do it yourself is a very useful skill. So I hope that this was helpful. Thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns, and I will be happy to address them. Thank you.